hope everybody's doing well this evening. It's wonderful to see everybody. A lot of beautiful faces, as always. Um, I'm not going to get you to raise your hand, but as y'all know, last week we started a new thing in our uh, in a new stage here at the church in our new disciple plan, discipleship plan making. And part of that um, was getting back more to the the heart of prayer and the power of prayer. Uh, for anyone who wasn't here, just a quick summary. We're trying to just reconnect and make a personal uh, pledge to be, spend more time with the Lord in prayer. Not just in the morning when we wake up and in the evening before bed. Not just at meals when we do our grace. But actually taking time out of the day to find quiet time away from the distractions of the world. And just actually spending time with God in prayer. And I've actually also challenged y'all, as y'all know, to uh, thank and write out some of your prayers this morning. The prayer that I told right before, uh, the prayer that I prayed right before I uh, delivered the message was from uh, one of y'all. So thank you very much. So I want to encourage y'all to spend some time over the next few days just thinking about what you would write down if you were told to uh, write out a prayer. And then I would love for y'all to give it to me, to email it, bring it to me. I would uh, love to use it as one of the prayers during services. Um, I just want to encourage y'all to do that. But I just hope that all of y'all are actually getting really back serious down to the heart of prayer and the power of prayer. As y'all know, I'm a, a prayer fanatic. And I have actually told Keita this week that I just feel like the Lord has sort of taken me to a whole other level in my, my belief in prayer. Um, Sunday night I was in prayer and probably one of the best prayer times I've had in my whole life. Before I turned around and knew it, it had been a, a while, and I was just just in God's presence, and I just felt a feeling I never felt before. And I told Keith, I just felt like that he was taking me even higher to another level. And then I turned around the next day. I called school, as y'all know, I'll be uh, moving on to a different college, and I called them just to see where everything was with scholarships and grants that I had applied for. And they actually said, well, actually, for your junior year here that you applied for, uh, all of your school, all of your books, and everything will be 100% paid for. So um, I just, I got off the phone, and I told Keita, I said, man, I, I, mean, I, I walked around for like an hour like a little kid. And she, I was just prancing, and I would stand up, and she was like, what's wrong? I said, I just, I don't know. I like, I want to shout, I want to holler, I want to jump around. Uh, uh, now I know how sometimes those people in the holiness church can get excited and want to run the aisles because if they would have been an aisle in that house, I'd have ran it. I mean, I was that. I mean, I just I, it amazes me how I lay down the challenge and God just outdoes me every single time, and I just feel like that it's because of just taking this prayer thing to another level. So I encourage you if you're doing it, stay with it. Stay with it. If you haven't started yet. Oh, there's nothing but goodness that can come from it. It is just such an amazing, amazing feeling. With that being said, uh, remember about the prayers. Thank you once again for the prayer I got this morning. Because uh, we do forget sometimes to thank God for what he does for us. Our scripture reading this morning is going to come from the book of John. The book of John chapter 16. And we're going to be verses 12 and 13. We will actually cover a few scriptures throughout the uh, message tonight, but this is just one to start off uh, the message tonight to just get us on the right track, and it's a, a, a scripture about truth. Um, but we're in the book of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, fourth book of the New Testament, make it a little bit easier to find. And once you get to John, we'll be in chapter 16, verse 12 and verse 13. John 16, 12, and 13. Let us hear the reading of God's Word. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. This is Jesus speaking. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come, the Word of God for the people of God. Does anybody remember, and you might have to 
Some of y'all, well, y'all, not many people will have to go too far back. Uh, some of y'all around my age will go back a little bit. Some of y'all will actually have to come forward. But maybe your child, you might remember. You remember a thing back in the 70s called a Stretch Armstrong. You remember a Stretch Armstrong? It was this, it was this man, and he had his goo stuff in him, but you could stretch him, and you could pull his legs and his arms. Y'all remember Stretch Armstrong? Stretch Armstrong, which I had, um, had a nemesis called Stretch Monster. Stretch Monster was green and looked like, remember the old movie, The Creature from the Black Lagoon? He sort of looked like The Creature from the Black Lagoon and you could stretch him too. Well, Stretch Monster was probably one of my favorite toys. I had just gotten a new bedroom set. It was a new bed and it had a, a bed where it had like a drawer underneath that you pulled out that was actually a mattress in it. And then you would pull it back in and it would sort of hide away. And it had the new bed, the new um, uh, dresser drawers, and then the new, uh, it had the uh, a desk with a chair, and it had these shelved things that sat on it, but it was an all new bedroom set. And I probably hadn't had Stretch Monster too long, from what I can recall, but in all of my playing, he had developed a little tear. And one day when I was playing and developed a tear, this goo started coming out of it. Well, I did what any kid around eight or nine years old would do. I repaired it. I put him back on the, in his little spot, which sat high up on the, uh, the, um, the shelves and on the table at uh, the desk, and I let him be. Well, my dad came into the room, and I guess it had been a few hours. Stretch Monster, the Band-Aid and the wrapping that I put on him and the gauze and everything, didn't stop it, and all of that goo had looked, leaked out, and it had gone from shelf to shelf to shelf, and then spread all over everything. And it's not one of those things that just, it, after a while, it gets real sticky, and when you wipe it up, it sort of messes up the, the you know, the uh, finish. Anyway, my dad came in, and he saw it, saw it, and he told me that he, and he had never, I was one of these guys that all the punishment in my house growing up came from my mom. She did the spanking, so he had never actually uh, punished me. And he said when he saw that, he was so angry, he was he grabbed Stretch Monster, and he was coming to find me to show it to me, to get on to me, and to probably spank me. And he said when he grabbed him to take him off, he said, I would have probably given you one of the worst spankings in your life, but as soon as I grabbed him and I saw the Band-Aid and the gauze and everywhere where you had wrapped him up and tried to repair him, he said, I started laughing, and at that point I couldn't go and do it and punish you for it. Um, it's a story that I've shared with Keaton and I've shared with many people. Tonight I want to share a truth with you. You can take things that are rusted and you can spray paint over them. And it doesn't fix the problems. You can take a car that the transmission is messing up in it. And you can buff and wax and polish it. And you can make the outer part of it and the hood shine shine where you can see your reflection and it's not going to fix the problem of the transmission and you can have a tumor you can have an internal disease you can have cancer and you can put as many band-aids over your body as you want and it's not going to heal you so many problems in our life are on the inside and the only way that you can fix that is by going to the inside. But so often with inside problems, we try to fix it by going on the outside, but you have to go to the inside. I was reading a story today that I actually included in the message tonight, and it was about this man who had done the work. He came in, it was real early, and it was still dark out, and it was in the city. When he came in, he set the alarm, and he went to go start doing his work. Well, he was wondering, he was always sort of a little apprehensive, wondering you know, if anybody would ever try to break the end because he was the only one there. Well, while he was there, the alarm started going off. And he just thought to himself, oh my goodness, thieves have come to break in. There's brokers here. He jumped up. He took off running. He didn't see anything. So he went and he reset the alarm. He ran back to call the police. While he was calling the police to tell them, the alarm went off again. So he said, the alarm scared them. I went and reset it. It went off while I was calling the police. They have come back now, and they have tried to get in again. 
So he runs back. They're nowhere to be found. So he's thinking, well, the alarm is scared. They've taken off again. So he goes back. He resets the alarm. He goes to run to hide to wait for the police. And he goes off again. Well, at this time, he's starting to think, wait a minute, I very seriously doubt that they're outside running to the door trying to get in. When they hear the alarm, they run hide, and then they run back. So he's thinking there must be something wrong with the alarm. So he ends up calling the alarm company, and he says in the story, he said, I told him something's wrong with the alarm. I keep resetting it. It keeps going off. Something is happening. It's malfunctioning. And he said that could be the only, the only solution, the only problem could be that there's a malfunction with the alarm. And the guy on the other end, the operator says to him, he says, well, there could be one other thing. He said, do you know that at y'all's business that y'all have motion sensors? And then it hit him. The police arrived and he went and told them, oh, don't worry about it. The problem's not on the outside. Problems on the inside. He said in the story, they didn't ask too many questions and I was more than happy not to give any answers. What had been happening is he was moving around and running back and forth. He was setting off the alarms and did not even realize it. He was thinking that the problem was on the outside, but in actuality, the problem was on the inside. Have you ever had a problem on the inside that you blamed on something on the outside? Have you ever had a problem in your life that you really realized later was an internal problem, but you were blaming it on everything else on the outside? You ever been there? I'm a firm believer. Some people have different names for it. Your conscience, a sixth sense, whatever, intuition, whatever. But I'm a big believer that we have alarms that go off in our life every day. And it's the Holy Spirit, God working through the Holy Spirit to warn us of troubles ahead. I think that we have things within our body that throws up red flags. If you go into a fit of rage, that should be a warning sign that there are some issues there with temper, with self-control. If you are having some uh, uncontrolled debt, there are some issues there. There are some sirens and warning flags that are going off that you may have some money management problems. If you are having a guilty conscience about something, and I don't know if you've ever had a guilty conscience about something that you've done or been part of and it just wore out you. If you have a guilty conscience, there should be a red flag that there are some issues going on within you. And the Holy Spirit gives you these alarms in your life. He sends out these red flags. He sends out the signals that there are some issues on the inside that need to be taken care of. But let me ask you this. When they go off, when these sirens go off, how do you respond? How do you respond? Because you know what I have noticed here lately, and I'm one of the worst ones about this. Here lately, I have been blaming a lot of stuff in my life on Washington. I had been blaming a lot of stuff. You know what? Things are tough financially. Well, look what Congress is doing. Look what they're doing up in Washington. Look what they're doing there. I'm having financial difficulties. They've raised the debt ceiling. If they didn't have tax rates so high, I would be able to get by a lot better. If I didn't have to pay these taxes, financially, I'd be in good shape. We look at things in our financial realm, and here lately, we're blaming Washington, we're blaming the president, we're blaming Congress, we're blaming the debt ceiling. We are blaming everything we can on all the other people that are causing this. Failures in life, a lot of people, and this is probably the biggest one, they want to blame, blame family. Well, my parents always loved them better. They always treated them better. That's why they did so much better in life. They were always given everything. I didn't get the same opportunities. If I would have been treated that way as my brother or as my sister, if I would have been treated that way, I would have succeeded a lot better. I would have done a lot more in life. Have you ever noticed that people that are having uh, weight issues, and y'all know, I mean, I'm not a slim fella. I'm always having a weight issue. But a lot of people in this world, well, if the fast food places didn't sell the Big Macs, if they didn't sell the double cheeseburger and the large fry, if they didn't biggie size everything, then I wouldn't have this weight issue. Have you noticed fast food places now is getting to the point that they've got all, almost everything on us becoming like a diet menu because everybody is blaming McDonald's and Burger King and Hardee's for putting on the extra pounds. Well, you know what? I